And we're back with some more Kenshi. In the last episode, we power leveled all of the thievery stats, and we made ourselves enormous amounts of money, and we used that to ally with the beak things, as in those, you know, horror murder giraffes over there. However, those murder giraffes no longer hate us anymore. Next up, we're going to go about acquiring some of the technology we're going to need. Oh, oh let's go by and say hello. Anyone? No, no, they're all happy with us. Also, as well as that, we can raid their nests and they'd be quite happy. Uh, what have we got in inventory? Uh, let's grab a couple of eggs just to take for sale. We don't really need to do, th do this, but it's just a nice to see. <laughs> Thank you. Right now, we're heading over to Black Scratch. Black Scratch is where the Grand Library is. It's the place that contains most of the blueprints in the game, and we're going to go grab a bunch of them. Things are very low risk about now, namely because nothing that get, nothing out there can actually catch us. We can run at 24 miles per hour and it's almost impossible for any enemies to come even close to that. The only thing that could catch us is big things and they're our friends. In Black Scratch, the first place you want to go to is Blueprints, right over here. Now, this is the largest reserve of them ever created in the world of Genshi. So, you want to wander in here, and let's see, where is everyone today? You know, it doesn't really matter. There's several ways to do this. You can actually stay at the top of the stairs, or you can just run down the sides, which is also a good choice. Running down the sides here, you should be shielded from view from everyone else, and then you can pick the lock. And this thing contains the majority of the blueprints, but not all of them. And there we go. Yeah, there's going to be a lot of right-clicking here. Oh, this is going to take a while. Once you've got them all, just go back into your own inventory and it's time to basically learn all of them. Some of them I've already acquired. Uh, the great thing about these though is they don't actually weigh anything, so they're great for sales actually. If you're going to run around to different cities, you can bring these with you and sell them on because this is the tech hunter side, meaning you can sell them to anyone else. They won't care really because of about the stealing chances. And since they weigh nothing, it's actually a really light way to carry around a lot of cash. After you learn them all, this thing here will cycle through all the blueprints you're learning. It's going to take a while. We, we, we may have picked up a few. And then we're just going to wait three seconds. And excellent. It's now like nothing ever happened. No one will even notice. Uh, in fact, we're going to come up here and we're going to loot that as well while we're about. Usually the front desk has some good stuff in it. Actually, you know what? Let's talk to this guy. And we're going to sell him on those eggs. We don't want them. You can have those, thanks very much. And in exchange, we will loot your counter and we'll take them back. Thank you. Hmm. Actually, do you have more money? How would you like to buy some more big thing eggs? Oh, damn it, no. He's going to notice if we try and sell him the same things again. He's learning. Next, you go upstairs. There's definitely more blueprints to be found up here. They've got two guards. Sometimes they'll have more or less, depending, but we're just going to run all the way back here. Try not to stay in their line of sight for too long. And then hide behind this. Done. And now we can basically strip mine this place from the rear. Well, that was very productive in terms of learning all the stuff about this area. All stealing done. We've made ourselves a bunch of cash, but more importantly, we got lots of blueprints. And uh, next up, we want to go down here. It's sort of almost in a straight line, and you'll see this crater right here. And inside that crater is a blueprint we desperately, desperately need. Time to start moving, and if you could time it so that you arrive at night, that would be great. I think I am going to be off, though. I think we will be a little bit too late by the time we get there. It should be dawn. One of the reasons we picked a hive of prints was, well, hivers are all immune to acid rain. It makes uh, coming to areas like this much safer. And there should be, yes. We have uh, arrived at the location, and it's only 5 o'clock in the morning. That means we have one hour before everyone starts getting out of bed. One hour to completely raid this place. Now, these... People will actually be not aggressive towards you, namely because they're not aggressive by default and we're not human. Uh, they don't really care about us, plus we're really fast, so we can just run by them. Now, uh, there he is right there, but shouldn't he have gone to bed already? Yeah, he should be asleep right now. Oh, more of them. Oh, they're everywhere. Fine, we will go hide up here just a little bit. It would be better if we had to come here earlier. He won't go to sleep until all of the, the skellies have left. I mean, the other humans have left. Uh, while they're doing that, let's rob this place blind. There's actually some really good stuff up here. Uh, no, not there. Come on, one of you is going to be loaded. No, that's definitely not it. Ah, that's safe over there. That's probably got something good in it. Ah, jackpot. Engineering research. That we will take. Thank you very much. Now, has he gone to sleep yet? Now, normally I would just wait till 11 or 12 o'clock at night and then all the skellies would, would file out, or the human skellies would file out, and he would go to bed, at which point we could rob him while he's asleep. 
he doesn't seem to react if we if he catches us robbing him. So you have about a fifty or sixty percent chance of taking the stuff out of his inventory. However, I'm in a rush, so we're just gonna rob him. Actually, we're gonna rob this safe while we're up here as well. Yeah, it's crazy the way you can literally pick the lock on that safe while standing above it. It seems to have problems with height differentials and uh, access to things. So yeah, we're gonna take that. Uh, thank you very much. Oh my god, no, I don't need any more skeleton repair kits. I've, I'm swimming in them at home. But uh, the ancient science books, yes, please. Uh, then once the three seconds have elapsed, we're gonna go down and we're gonna try and knock him out. Eh, this has an element of risk to it, but we're pretty. Ooh. Let me get back there. Damn it. Ooh, where are you going? Please tell me you're going to bed. Yep, they're going to bed. They're going to be getting up again in about, oh, 25 minutes. But come on, hurry up, hurry up. Go to bed, go to bed, go to bed. Perfection. We can now run down here. And we can loot them while they're sleeping. Now you'll see our chances of getting it is 95%. Well, that's that's pretty good. We'll take those, thank you very much. We could also try looting their Nodachi, which, no, we don't even want it. But uh, it's nice to know that it's possible. Ooh, masterwork play check. No, no, don't get distracted. All right, while he's still sleeping, we're going to pop over here. This gets us some more ancient science books, uh, some more skin suits we do not want, uh, more ancient science books, more ancient science books, some more uh, blueprint things, and that's a weapons locker, isn't it? Yeah, weapons cabinet, we don't care. And we're done. We'll just wait until the three seconds. Yeah, no, I don't think they've even noticed. <laughs> Perfect. Can we get back there? I don't think we can. I think we'll maybe knock out a few of the skellies as we're going leaving. Namely because these guys have actually decent toughness. Uh, it's about 43 or 45 or so. So some of these we actually have a chance of failing. But it will help strengthen our assassination skills just that little bit more. The skellies here don't care that we're knocking out their friends. We, we're literally doing it with people seeing us do it. Ooh, stealth KO, 44%? How tough are you? Or maybe it's just... Yeah, they don't seem to care. Like, we were in plain sight of a whole bunch of people doing these, and they just don't seem to mind. I was willing to run once the t once things went sideways, but... Nope, seems you can just keep stealth KOing, KOing a whole bunch of them and really train up your assassination skill. I may have overstayed my welcome just a little bit. We've got a, a little bit of a scratch to the head and arm there because I decided to just keep clonking them on the head until one of them got a little bit angry at me. Unfortunate, but it was about to happen eventually. I regret nothing. The training was worth it. Anyway, under our inventory here, we've got the Skeleton Human Transformation Bible. This is a bad thing. It's got the peeler machine in it, which is going to be very useful for us, so we're going to learn that. Uh, is there anything else? No, I think we've got all the blueprints they had available. Our next port of call is also not on the map. We're going to the Crab City. Now, the way you find it is you look over here and you see this beach right there? With that little bit of a... Uh, almost looks like a an elephant dinosaur or something or other. That's where you want to go. Right there. That is the location of the Crab City. We want to get access to their crab armor and their blueprints for it. Once you get close enough, the settlement will show up on the map. It's actually just a little bit above the weird elephant looking thing. It's in a valley, so there's only one entrance in, so the pathing might be a bit wonky. Anyway, let's go rob some stuff. These crabbed kind are very nice people, but we're still going to rob their blueprints because we want them. Now, it's going to be difficult because, uh, well, the blueprints are located in that safe at the rear, and there's a lot of people in here. So, yeah, let's just go and hop in there. Can you see us? Can you? Nope. Damn it, that one can. How about in here? No. Let me do some playing around here. There might be a way we could get this to work. We we managed it. We uh we actually hid in just behind this bed and it seems they can't see us anymore. So, we're just going to pick the lock. And then we're just going to grab the resources. We're going to want the crab armor. Yep, rusty chainmail, uh, crab trousers. Wait, where's the crab helmet? Hmm. I think we're going to need to rob something else, aren't we? Yeah, probably that one. Damn it. I have tried playing around a bunch to try and find some way to get in, but I can't. So I've reset the, uh, the stealth thing so that they can't see us. And we're going to take a slightly more aggressive approach. And there you go. Did you, did you even notice? No, you did not. Perfect. Eh, we could knock that guy out, but that just seems mean. Why not? Okay, perfect. We'll loot this one. We will grab the crab helmet blueprint. Hmm. You know what? We might actually steal some of this stuff to bring with us, so long as it doesn't overburden us. Well, that's all the crab armor researched. Now all we gotta do is steal the stuff and get out of here. 
could have gone better, could have gone worse. But uh, that guy right there, it turns out he had quite decent crab armor on him. So we've got some high-grade crab armor and a regular crab helmet. They'll come in handy once we start getting into training. And we'll be making our own... What? Oh, did he lock the door? Oh, it's nighttime. We are so lucky that that guy didn't see us. If he saw us, mm, he would have just basically attacked us on sight because it was too late at night and we shouldn't be in here. That would explain also why he went to bed. Okay, close that. And yeah, all right, now we should be good to leave. All the blueprints we need have been acquired. Well, pretty much all of them. Next up, it's time to go back home, but we're going to head back through Black Scratch. Their blueprints should have regenerated and we can grab a whole bunch more. Now, this is not entirely necessary, but I do like to rob this place a second time just to make sure we get all the potential blueprints that are out there. On the bright side, you also get access to some of the treasure maps and things like that. Also, this is going to make us an awful lot of money. Not that we really need it, but let's go for it. Well, that's all the blueprints we can't use because we already have them or we can't use them just yet. I, I think we're good on blueprints. Let's head home. Time for the next stage of the plan. Well, I'm not going to lie about this next part. It gets a little bit dark. We're going to use peeler machines on our own people. Not not quite yet, but uh, it's going to be a thing. It's just it's the easiest way to de-limb people, which is not an expression you ever think you're going to hear yourself saying. All right, we're going to build this now. Oh, you don't have any building materials? It's fine. Harp's got them. These things are incredibly cheap. I think they cost one building materials, and they build rather quickly. And done. Let's not put anyone in that just yet. We need to go get ourselves some supplies, so we're going to grab our bull handbag and go shopping. You see, uh, bulls... Ooh, actually, I should leave some of that armor behind. Our bull here only weighs in at 30 kilos to carry, but it's holding about 250 kilos of stuff inside it. And we're about to head to the Skeleton City, and they've got some of the best gear. Unfortunately, it's expensive, and stealing from them is tricky. I mean, we can steal some stuff, so we definitely are going to thieve a bunch of them, but at the same time, we also want to steal all our money back, or, you know, drain their bank accounts while also... You know what? You'll see when we get there. Let's go for a jug. As you can see, we can still hit 24 miles per hour while carrying an entire bull on our shoulders. Which, yeah, Kenshi, it's just amazing. The robot city we're heading to is located right here. The problem getting there is you want to avoid this area. This area right here is full of poison gas that will kill you. Well, you can get gas masks and stuff like that, but if you don't have that, you're going to want to avoid that place like the plague. So a good idea is to come down here. There's a way station right there. So come down to about this section and then head across. That will allow you to skirt this poisonous area and not end up choking to death. Anyway, I think we're in about the right location, so let's just hang on left there and head straight across. This is the Black Desert City. It is not very and fighting, but it does have some of the best equipment in the game. Uh, and in here, there is someone we would like to meet. Is it Sad Neil? Ah, Sad Neil, there you are. Uh, let's go get an instant to join us. This is even free. I just go with one, 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 and we basically convince them to join us. Welcome to the team, Sad Neil. Now, the first thing we're going to want to do is trade with them and give them a backpack. Oh, damn it, no, it's on the bull. There you go, Sad Neil. Your job will be to stand around here and, uh, well, find us bargains. You know what? We'll leave you outside. It's grand. In fact, we might get you to follow a guard so you can at least level up your athletics. We might be able to run you out of here at some point. The reason we want to use them around here is they can hang around here and just buy stuff when we need it. And at the same time, we've given them a nice big backpack to hold on to that stuff. And, well, they don't starve, so we don't have to worry about feeding them. Oh, I just got to find a guard for them to follow. Yeah, go follow that guy, whoever he is. We are going to head over this direction and have a talk with the people who sell robotic arms and legs. Then we're going to rob a bunch of their stuff. And then we're going to sell them a bunch of stuff and buy some more stuff off them. Yeah, I'm going to call that a jackpot. That is a lot of limbs. Oh my god. We found this just upstairs at the back, so this wasn't even hard to get to. We're just standing here and going to rob all of this. I'm going to need another bull, aren't I? In the end, I'm just actually going to leave all the standard limbs. Unless it's specialist or masterwork, we're not taking them. Just, just on principle. If you don't want to actually rob this guy, well, semi-rob this guy, what you can do is buy what you want off him, then what you do is you trade away a whole bunch of blueprints for it, and then after you've traded away, you can come up here and he'll put all of the stuff you sell him into this one case. So I was basically able to buy all my blue, well, steal all my blueprints back, meaning this cost me nothing. You're effectively bartering away a bunch of blueprints and actually coming out ahead because you clean out their inventory of the 25 grand. And at that point, we just leave. Oh, and we should take our distracto bill with us. Next up, we're going to head over to this location where we can buy weapons and things. I mean, we can buy a few. We don't need them, but, uh, well, why not? I should probably point out, all of these little shacks here have lots of nice expensive goodies in them. 
Uh, the problem is, but you don't really need them. Once I discovered how powerful thievery was, this place is not actually that good. Though you can, where is it? There is, yes, there is one building here. You can buy that building if you want to set up a little base out in the Deadlands. Though do be aware, it constantly rains acid here, so you can't really... Well, only hivers or skeletons are going to be surviving in this locale. And we're going to head over here to the scrap house and buy ourselves a few weapons. Why not? No, oh, an AI course. This wonderful little shop here is... Well, it's kind of amazing how much stuff they have in here. They have a whole bunch of AI cores, science books, all sorts of things we would like to get our hands on. Uh, the problem is they, you know, they're expensive. So we can steal some of them with relative impunity. For example, we can stand behind here, lockpick that safe and take what's in it. And if we use the distracto bolt to keep everyone distracted, we can also uh, rob a few other things while we're here. Oh, there's a couple of science books. We're not really that interested in the weapons, to be honest. Actually, an Eagle's Cross masterwork. Eh, we'll, we'll take one of those. Why not? They, they, that could come in handy later on. If you nip around to this position over here, you can also lockpick that ancient safe by hiding in here. And you're quite safe from detection. And this allows you to rob a few more things. Now, the great thing about ancient safes is they don't contain weapons, so hopefully they'll have... Yep, there it is. AI core. Uh, engineering research, ancient science books, map of the Ashlands. Hmm. Okay, yeah, we'll take that. Yeah, well, as you can see, lots of good stuff we can nick. We have looted everything we can that's easy to do without too much risk. We don't want to take a risk because we don't really need to here. I'll show you why. Uh, we'll just go down and buy out the remaining AI cores. Uh, so yeah, they, they only ha ever have three. They're going to have a limited... They, those don't regenerate, so you can't come back for more. Uh, we'll, yeah, we'll take all of that stuff there. All that stuff doesn't regenerate. They're all unique. Oh, what was that blueprints, actually? Exotic weapons. Yes, we will take those. And I have been looking for a good fragment axe. Let me have a look at... Well, we're, we're going to grab that Old World Bow Mark II. That's actually a pretty good DPS weapon. Uh, you can go over there and... Oh, let me to move some things around here for a second. I also want to grab that fragment axe because it's an edge... Where is it? There was an edge one or an edge two fragment axe. Yeah, I want to see some more... If we can do some more strength training. And you'll see they've got 200 grand. We can't just let that money sit there. That would be a waste. So... One minute while I actually use... I wanna, we're going to sell them a bunch of blueprints, but I want to make sure we don't sell them any blueprints we haven't actually learned yet. Used all the blueprints we possibly can. Now what we can do is we can sell him all of these blueprints. Quite a few of them. Uh, oh wait, no, not that one. That one I think we actually just stole from him. He, he might notice. Yeah, on that one he'll also notice. Damn it. Okay. But we have lots of blueprints we can sell this guy. And get most of our money back. But not only that one second. Oh wow, still 70 grand left? Uh, where's the bull? Well, I'm going to want you to sell them a bunch of skeleton repair kits. Yeah. God, these are so... Skeleton repair... Oh, no. Nope. Skeleton repair kits are amazing because they're so uh, money dense. Like, we can just carry around so much money in these, it's insane. Wow. Eh. So, we have sold them all that stuff, and you'd think that would be a net negative. Uh, no. All we're going to do is this. We're going to pop around the back here. Eh. Throw on sneak again. Sneak around to this section, get us in nice and tight, and... Nope, not that one. Which one is it? Where did you put all of our blueprints? Never mind, I found the blueprints. They were in the safe. Remember the one we picked earlier from complete safety? Yeah, so... Yoink! I also found all of our skeleton repair kits, though I'm not even sure we need them. How many have we got in the bull? You know what? You can keep them. We, we, we can just steal more of those. The, but the blueprints are just so cost-effective, I couldn't leave those behind. Anyway, that is our shopping done for the day. Let's head back home. Uh, we better pick up our bull shoulder bag and be on our way. Between the bull's inventory and our inventory, I'm going to call that a good day. We're just getting a little bit closer to our little gym that we want to run. First, though, we got to remove some of those weaker fleshy limbs. After coming back home, it's time to queue up a bit of tech. Now, we have just upgraded our research bench to level 4. That means we can research tech level 5, which requires 8 ancient science books. Which, yep, we, we got those on hand. So, let's get tech level 5. That should unlock the farming section so that we can get hydroponics. Uh, let's actually put you up there. Yeah, it's going to take 15 hours. Small bit of time. In the meantime, Harp, I have good news and bad news. Uh, good news is you're getting upgrades. Bad news is it's going to be really, really painful. Uh, let's let's grab you some the limbs you're going to be installing, though. I'm thinking, ooh, Masterwork Stealth Leg. We only got Stealth Legs for the left, so... Yeah, Masterwork Stealth Leg for your left leg. And then for your right leg, we can only get you a Specialist Scout Leg, I think. It's probably the best we got. Yeah, Specialist Scout, right. Okay, so you're getting half Stealth, half, half Speed. And then for arms, we're going to give you a steady arm left. And then, uh, where is the other one? A 
Thief's Arm Right Masterwork. This is basically your rollout. This is the kind of limbs you're going to want for someone who's a specialist in assassination thievery, that kind of stuff. Lockpicking thievery and dexterity all get a bonus from that arm. You can only get those in right arms, actually. There's no left arms that are thief arms. And then for left arms, you get the steady arm. This is designed for crossbows and dexterity. It just, it's designed for your more assassin-orientated characters. Now all we have to do is uh, remove those limbs, which, yeah, this is going to hurt a bit. Let's wait until the rest of the group get over here. I'm going to need some healing on you while you're getting uh, pasted. The uh, medical support team to make sure this goes ahead while Ara uh, are here. Yeah, let's uh, let's get you in there. Or do we have to grab... I think someone has to pick you up and put you in. I don't think you can volunteer to go in. Our surgeon hand here is going to... Oh, put Harp in there. Yeah, this is going to be unpleasant. Uh, yeah, their limbs are going to slowly get ablated away. Um, we should probably take off the armor and stuff to make this just a little bit faster. Uh, we shall apply healing to make sure that they don't bleed out or anything, but... Uh, yeah, this is probably the weirdest ceremony you've ever seen. I'm going to skip this forward a wee bit. All right, so Harp has been uh, successfully removed from the machine. Uh, they're a little bit sore right now, but once we get them some medical attention and maybe a good night's sleep and a whole bunch of therapy, they'll probably be fine. Probably. But this does mean we can make a few upgrades. Namely, we can start chucking these limbs on. Soon. Once they wake up, they will have improved power. Uh, unfortunately, you know, awful lot of trauma to go with it, but they'll be fine. They'll be fine. After a bit of or and or, Harp is looking much, much better. Also, their stats have vastly improved. It's something to do with having upgraded to uh, robotic limbs. So, uh, right now, we've got them with one scout leg and one stilt leg. But if we swap in for two scout legs, we can get their speed up to 46 miles per hour. They're going to be a blur. And we have some plans for them to go places. But first, we need to actually make an armor forge. Uh, I need to get my hands on a gas-proof helmet. That might take a minute. I think we'll stick it down there. Change my mind. Stick it in that corner. Now, the reason, the only reason we're building this is I forgot to pick up a gas mask along the way, and we do have the tech to build the necessary gas masks. Otherwise, just pick one up somewhere through the playthrough up to this point, and you don't have to waste a whole day and a half getting this sorted. Uh, Technology-wise, we have knocked out core level 5. So right now, we've gained access to the important stuff, basically hydroponics. And the great thing about hydroponics is you only need one AI core and that unlocks the rest. All the rest just need the ancient science books. So yes, we are going to queue up hydroponics. Well, once we get the research bench up to level five, that might take a minute. What does that actually require? That will require five iron plates. Actually, never mind. That'll take like two minutes. Then we're just going to queue up one swamp ninja mask. These things are cheap as chips. They take a little bit of armor plating, a little bit of cloth. We bought them in the nearby shop and we only need one of them. And once it's done... Yeah, where is it? Ah, in your inventory. Perfect. Then we'll just transfer that over to... And now they have complete immunity to gas. Uh, you know what? You don't even need this anymore, then. This only protects you from gas and... 40% uh, gas and dust storms. This presents you protects you 100%. Also gives it, actually, a minor bonus to stealth. There's two other helmets you can make that give you protection from gas, but this one gives us a stealth bonus, so I think it, it's theme-appropriate. While this construction is going on, we're going to have a quick look back at Sad Neil. Uh, unfortunately for Sad Neil, he wandered into someone's house following the guard, and then that person, Ar Aramid, started chasing them. So I ran them back to the pub and put them into uh, one of the beds. I figured that way if they get knocked unconscious, they can recover. Unfortunately, the guy will never de-aggro. Ever. So even though we're in a recovery coma now, we're going to wake up and immediately... Yep, they're going to start smacking them again. Sad Neil's life is pretty sad. Now they're minus 66, but... Even though they're still attacking them, it doesn't actually hit them anymore. So their toughness is now up to 28. Uh, I think it's going to keep going up. And all, all it costs is about two grand a day, I think. How much do these beds cost to rent? Uh, yeah, 200. Sorry, 200 a day. And they get to get free toughness training for a very long period of time. Ah, you accidentally stumble into an exploit while you're using a whole bunch of other exploits. It's, it's just perfect. Before we send Harp off on this mission, we should probably take care of tech. Hydroponics is now available. We can knock that out. Uh, we don't get hydroponic hemp because we need hemp farming. We haven't actually been to the swamp yet, but we'll get around to it. But this opens up this whole section and we can knock it out whenever we want. Industry-wise, oh, by the way, that cost us one AI core. Industry-wise, we did knock out the heavy armor. That took us one engineering blueprint. Everything else outside of that is just ancient science books. It is now time for Harp to head off on their mission to get us our training dummy. And our training dummy is located all the way down here in the ominous place. Yeah, this is going to be a long journey. But it's going to be a fast one because Harp can run at 46 miles per hour. 
All right, let's, uh, let's, let's do this at high speed. Yeah, I'm going to have problems with loading screens not catching up. Whoa. Whoa. Yep, that's actually... Stop, you're making me dizzy. Uh, I'll be back in about, like, two, three minutes, hopefully. Well, this took way longer than anticipated. Harp decided to swim. They're the fastest land animal around, and they decided to swim. Actually, not the fastest land animal. I think the elder big things can run at 50 miles per hour. Still decided to swim. Uh, I just let him. I mean, if that's the way he wants to go for it, why not? Uh, we're not even going to bother raiding any of the other areas. We're just going to go straight for Catalan. Welcome to the Sanctuary of Catalan. Now, he's over there. Uh, no, don't go that way. Go the other way. We don't want to go through the thralls. There's a bunch of thralls in the other one, and... We don't want to tangle with them. We just want to go straight for the boss man himself. Okay, right there. And we're probably going to have to rejig your gear just a little bit. You've been rigged for speed to get here. Let's just put in a little bit of stealth back on top of that. Go. Cool. Now, uh, let's get just in the door. Perfect. And there is Catlon. We have a 1% chance of knocking them out. That's uh, pretty bad. Let's see if we can... Uh, sneak up on them a little bit. Come on. Perfect. They have no idea we're here. Stealth KO. Nope. I don't think they noticed. Let's try this again. Actually, let's see just how good our, ch our stats are. Our assassination is at 77 with a 79%. And uh, on top of that, we have equipped ourselves with, was it a thief's arm? Lockpicking, thievery, and dexterity, and this one comes with, oh, hmm, never mind, I could have sworn one of those give bonuses to assassination. This definitely does, a plus 1.1 to assassination skills, and we've got a high bonus to stealth, so let's try this again. Failed? Damn, yeah, this might take a few attempts, we're at 78 and 3%, let's see how much it goes up every time we do this. Uh oh, he started speech. Have they? Yeah, we're at six percent. Let's try and finish this off before he finishes his speech. That would be bad. Okay. Yeah, we got him. Right, perfect. Now, should we loot him for? Do not take the AI core. Do not take the CPU. Leave both of them in there. Otherwise, they die. Now this way is. A lot, like 40 kilos. I'm not sure we can carry that back separately to him. Yeah, he weighs 30 kilos. You know what? We'll just... We can't even stick that in his inventory. Fine, you can keep that weapon. That is grand, actually. Hmm. One moment. Perfect. Now they can carry the bags. Why not? And let's bring them home. And that's our training dummy acquired. Having stealth this high is just incredibly broken. Now, while they were out away here playing... Hey, Sad Neil, where was the guy who was trying to kill you? Did they stop? Oh, they must have got bored of beating you up. Your toughness went up to 32, which is eh, not terrible. Hey, right, but while all that was going on, we need to go back here and we need to put ourselves together a robotics bed for Catalan. Hmm, actually, you know what? We'll wait until we get home. We don't need to be speedrunning this. Well, that was sad. I'd forgotten. There is no AI cores in Catalan's chamber. Yeah, uh, we might have to go into the other ones to get some, and I'm not willing to do that until we've safely dropped this guy off. He's an insane lunatic, and I don't want him getting loose. We managed to knock him out only because we were just way too stealthed, but if he wakes up during daylight hours, that... <laughs> no, no, don't go that way. Yeah, let's go around the other way. We don't want to run into the hundred or so thralls that are in there. We can run 39, was it, 36 miles per hour in acid rain while carrying a robot covered in full plate armor on her back and still have a stealth value of about 69. That's, um, yeah, that's incredibly broken. Catalan is finally here. He's home. Uh, it's day 18 and we're going to buy this location over here. It's directly across the road from our current location, so I would like to put our training section over here. Now all we gotta do is build a robotic bed in there. Mm, give me a minute. This is going to be Catalan's new home. Well, we'll have to make some minor adjustments to him first. With the bed completed, it's time to uh, pop back over to the peeler machine for a few minutes. Uh, where did I put it? Yeah, over here. All right, let's get on with this. Yes, I am aware how horrifying this is, but you know, the, this robot killed a lot of people, like a lot. Uh, now what we wanna do is just remove a leg. We just want to remove one leg that makes them well, usable. 
Uh, the problem is it's also going to try and take their other arms and legs. So what we're going to do is repair them up as it as it's running so that only one leg goes. Assuming it... Seriously? Oh, it's destroying the armor. Well... Yeah, that's fine. Uh, there we go. Legs are... Nope, 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 guys. Don't repair the leg. Uh, I need you to pull back for a moment. Nope. Damn it, I'm going to have to make some adjustments. All right, we have managed to meter out the healing a little bit better. We can actually heal them faster than the peeler machine works on them. So all we want to do, uh, well, soldier, you can stop for there, is... And maybe you can stop as well over there. And, yeah, get out of the way. That just leaves Harp working away. Perfect, they're just about counteracting it, so we should be able to grind off the leg without doing too much damage to them. Hm, this might be a handy way to grind up your, your robotic skill. Though, actually, no, probably just making robotics components would probably be a lot simpler and less horrifying. Right, once you get to about negative 150, the leg will come off. That is perfect. Now we want to pick them up. Whew. Ah, that was... Okay, that's the worst part of it over. Now all we got to do is just make sure they're fully repaired. Actually, we don't need to make sure they're fully repaired. They'll be fully repaired in a minute. We're going to take Harp and we're going to run them over here to this bed. Now... We need to make a few precautions here. We don't want people running in here and trying to kidnap Catalan or beat them up. So we're going to have to lock the door once they're inside and lock it. So down here in the bottom left, this is set to private. No one's allowed in. This is set to locked and this is set to door closed. Now, when we set it to private, it just means no NPC should come running in here. Uh, it won't actually keep out the police. That's usually why we keep the doors locked. Now, we want to put them into the skeleton repair bed. And boom, there you go. They're in the skeleton repair bed. And that should slowly repair them up. Their oil's at 66. That should keep going up now. Second. Oh, and I should probably maybe apply a little bit of repair from Harp as well. I think they're bleeding out. That was it. Their leg's gone, so we had to actually cure that up so that they stopped bleeding. And done. There you see. Oil. Getting right up there. So, what does this give us, is the question. Well, we're going to have to do a quick save reload, but uh, this is going to allow us to do an awful lot of attacking on Catalan while they're repairing themselves. Now, one second while I save reload. Well, this next bit is more complicated than I thought. Uh, I tried putting the bed up there, but then when I reloaded the game, uh, Catalan fell through the floor. So we've put Catalan in this bed, but we can't attack them. So I'm going to try reloading it, but if that doesn't work, there is... Uh, I think what's going on here is we never activated their uh, their little spiel or their little speech. We may have to make a minor change here. Oh, seriously? Now he's on the roof when I restart the game. Maybe I need a one-story building for this. That might be the only way to stop him blipping about the place. Uh, I don't think there's any one-story buildings we can buy. Maybe something tiny, but I'd rather not do this in a tiny place. Hmm. You know what? We'll figure it out. For now, though, he's going through his little spiel. So we are going to, well, sneak up with them. Uh, where is it? Yep, yeah, you. Sneak time. Okay, can we knock them out? Yes, we can. We can still kill them. If we turn off sneak, can we actually attack them? No, we cannot. We want to wait till they finish their speech. The problem was I knocked them out before they finished it. Okay, come on. Finish your little monologue. Oh, I think that's it. That's their monologue done, which means... Are they now attackable? Maybe? Hmm. Let me do some practice here. Ah, there we go. So they did their little speech monologue. Then, after they'd done it, we uh, knocked them unconscious and dumped them into the bed. And now we can attack them. If we just right-click on them, it won't give us the option to attack if we right-click. But if we just tap right-click, we will attack them. Uh, the first thing that we want to do is give them a weapon in their hands. The reason we want them, them is because... Not their martial arts skill. Their martial arts skill is terrible. What we want to do is give them a weapon so that their defense is 100. That way we can level up our attack really, really quickly. Now hold on while I get them a really terrible weapon. I figured the easiest way to demonstrate this would to be get two recruits and put them through the recruitment process, or the training process. Uh, first up, we'll start with uh, Zan here. You might want to take those clothes off. They're not going to survive the recruitment process. Uh, also, yeah, same with Jelong. I just picked these two up in the pub. They're nothing special or unique. Anyway, uh, first thing we do is, well, we put them in the peeling machine to get rid of those unwanted limbs. Um, I know that's almost the appealing thing in the world, but it's just what we're going to do. Uh, medic. And yes, we just have to make sure we pull them out before they bleed to death, but once their limbs are gone. Our two new recruits have been fully roboticized. I must admit that is a rather disturbing part of the process. I don't particularly like it. In RimWorld, they don't... Ugh. 
Anyway, that's the first part over with. It's time to put them onto stage two, where we crank up their uh, dexterity really, really high, very, very quickly, for very little effort. We're also going to crank up their attack as well. So we're going to get their melee attack and... Actually, no, we're going to get their martial arts and their dexterity up really high. Before we start, we'll just go over why we went to all of this effort. Uh, this defense number here, it determines how quickly we'll level up versus them and how high we can get before our progress caps out. So the reason we've equipped them the way we have is we want to take their 100 defense, which is the highest you can get is 100. Well, there's one other. But the highest you can get, but I can go to war with someone. Then we give them a foreign saber to give them plus seven defensive bonus, and we give them a drifter's leather jacket. There's two other types of jackets you can get them. They're actually better than this, but eh, whatever. These, these ones were easy to buy. This gives them a plus five melee defense bonus, giving them a grand total of... 112. To get our trading started, the first thing we gotta do is make Catalan mad at us again. So to do that, we gotta pick them up. Ugh, this is annoying. Uh, once we've got them picked up, we wanna drop them somewhere. Uh, I'd say over here is fine. You can actually just wait until they stop moving. We don't want them bouncing around too much. Uh, drop them down. Then we're gonna wait until they reboot and wake up. And then we're gonna smack them about the place a bit so they get angry. One of the nice bonuses to this is that we get to upgrade our... Uh, our stealth KOing or an assassination even more. Uh, assassination is based on either one of two stats. Toughness, that makes it, that's how hard it makes it. And this person has 100 toughness, making them one of the, well, the hardest person to stealth KO in the entire game. I think Bugmaster has 95 toughness, so yeah, this is, this is good trading. After you nab the stealth KO, you admire how much assassination you've got with Titty 3, and then you wait for them to reboot. Once they've rebooted, we should be able to start attacking them again. There we go. They're angry. Perfect. Then, Zan here. We're going to get you to do a little bit of changes here. First off, let's crank open those limbs. Uh, let's see if you can do some martial arts with just one limb. You should be able to, but I'm not sure. Just uh, one second here. Can you? No, you're going to need two arms to do the martial arts. That's fine. We'll get you a second arm. Now what we want to do to Zan is drive down their melee attack skills as much as possible. So to do that, we're going to give them samurai leg pants. Minus 10 to martial arts. Uh, we're going to give them samurai armor or crab armor. Both do the same. Minus 10 to martial arts. This one also decreases your dexterity, which I kind of like, because that's what we're trying to farm here. And this one gives minus 4 melee... Where is it? Uh, this one? Melee attack bonus. Nope. I'm not going to sworn one of them give a negative to um, your martial arts. Never mind. Uh, and then martial arts bonus for the boots as well. But they can't wear them, unfortunately. Oh, well. However, what they can do is wear the shopkeeper's backpack, which reduces their combat speed, their stealth, their dodge, but more importantly, combat skill bonus minus 10. And then we'll throw on a couple of these. And uh, that will overburden them to 676 kgs. And then, you know what? We're going to have to have someone pick you up and carry you over there because otherwise it'll take you half an hour to get to this location. Now, the reason we're overloading them is not for any sort of strength bonuses or anything like that. It's to actually drive down their stats. Oh, and you can go on hold and passive. Perfect. The reason we want to drive down their stats? Well, the weaker they are, the harder it is for them to actually do any damage to the target who's on the repair bed. So let's just grab this up. Their martial arts is at 1, but main thing here is working at his dexterity, which is currently at 176, 2, and now they're up to 3. Then they're up to 4. Yeah, this is the fastest way I know to crank dexterity. And because they're doing so little damage, Catalan is healing incredibly quickly. In fact, I think we can get rid of those for a minute. Yeah, so they can move a little bit faster. So long as we're not doing much damage to Catalan and they're healing it all up instantly. I mean, look at this. Catalan's barely even noticing. And that's it. Because our, uh, the difference between our level of attack and their level of defense is so incredibly high, it just drives up your martial arts rapidly. So 21%. Yeah, so we're at 11. 12. And so on and so forth. Yeah, I'm just going to skip this forward and let them punch the bejesus out of them. Oh, and we've also given them only one arm. Reason being, if they only have one arm, it drives down their stats even more. Yeah, this is taking too long. Uh, Jalonger? You know what? Come over here, why don't you get in on this as well? We'll just give you one arm. If anyone's doing too much damage, we can sort that out later. I think we have to leave you a white one? Or whatever. Start your martial arts there, buddy. There we go. Perfect. Much faster. As this has progressed, we've uh, thrown some encumbrance on top of them to slow them down and, well, basically make them worse at martial arts. You can see their martial arts is getting a encumbrance penalty of minus 58. Uh, on this one, it's minus 63. This keeps their damage nice and low, so they can just keep training at this all night long. 
And I'm right now up to 73 martial arts, 76 in dexterity, 75 martial arts, 67 in dexterity. But the, the Shek has a negative to dexterity training, which is why it's going to take a little bit longer for them. Once you hit 80 in any particular stat, things start to slow down significantly, I've been advised. So right now you can see dexterity is going quite quickly. Let's see what happens once we roll over into 80. I want to see if it does actually slow down as much as they say. It does not seem that bad, to be honest. I was expecting it to be an awful lot worse. I'm going to call that a raging success. Their dexterity is up to 80, Zan's dexterity is up to 85, their martial arts is up to 83, and martial arts is up to 86. These would make some wonderful martial arts if we worked on their strength. Actually, that's one thing. Hold on a second. Uh, let's take these two over here for a minute. And let's give them a giant sword. Now, the thing I find is we could give them the fragment axe, but it doesn't really up their strength that much. Like, this has a weight requirement of 50 kilos. So, let's say, grab that out. Chuck that in there. Actually, we're going to do it on uh, Jalonger here. They're going to become our heavy weapons person. So let's just equip them with all of the horrible, horrible stuff that they need to be geeked. Just absolutely terrible. We've given them an economy limb. If I could get my hands on another economy limb, I would. So their strength and all that is ridiculously bad. And then we're going to get them to attack here. Oh, wow. That is just... Oh, that is embarrassing. Yay. Well, they did 14 damage. Uh, hopefully they heal up fast enough there. Now, this was hoping would drive up their strength. Uh, let's speed this along. Their strength is at 33, 97%. And you missed. How do you miss? The guy's lying in a bed. Uh, 33, 90... 3.3% or 3%? Oh, you missed a couple of times. Come on. Ser okay, this is bad. Right, went up about two percentage points. So this is not really good for strength training, as far as I can tell. You're probably better off just running around. I was hoping this would be a good strength training m routine. Never mind. Well, in that case, we'll just have Jalonger train up in... Where is it? Pole arms. Can you actually hit anything with that? Come on. Oh, wow. You can't train pole arms this way? That's... I think that's embarrassing. <laughs> uh. I was really hoping you'd be able to hit him this way. I think I'm going to... Oh, there you go. You just got to go over the top. So it turns out pole arms are a bit special. Well, this stick is... When you attack with it, if you run away and run back, you do an overhead strike, which allows us to actually train this up. It's rather boring, though. I'd prefer a much more automated system for this. I think we're going to have to get a different weapon. All right, we've swapped to sabers. It's a terrible saber, which is... Where is it? Yeah, it's rusted junk, but... That's even better. You want a terrible weapon so that it doesn't do as much damage and your enemy can heal up faster than you can actually damage them. And then when you actually start damaging them more than they can heal, that's actually the problem. Yeah, that means sabers are already at 8 and they're just going to keep rising. We have our person equipped with minus 10 combat skills from the bag, a whole bunch of negatives from this to reduce damage, and yeah, a minus 5 to melee attack from the tin can helmet and a minus 10 to melee attack from the crab armor, which also reduces their dexterity which means their damage is lower. Uh, where is it? Our dexterity is actually... Oh, there we go. Reduced by minus 45 from armor and equipment. And we're still not doing any serious lasting damage to them, so this kind of works out. We can leave them trained there for a while. You will also notice that our melee attack is going up rather rapidly as well. So yeah, this is quite an easy way. Getting up to 80 this way is pretty simple. That only leaves one thing left to do once this maxes out. This is going to take a little while, but maxing out your melee attack and your sabers or hackers or whichever weapon you choose, getting up to 80, pretty handy when you've got a dummy here that's just going to sit there and take it. They will run out of oil after a while, at which point you'll have to stop your attacks until they regenerate a bit, but they honestly regenerate pretty fast. What time is it? 2.43? Yeah, like, they'll be good to go as you can actually see the oil going back up again, so it's not that big of a deal. Now, the last stat we can train properly is toughness. That one is actually pretty simple. Grab all your trainees and start heading over to Blast again. This this might take a little bit of a jog. On our way to Bast, we ran into exactly what we were looking for. A whole bunch of Holy Nation nutjobs. Exit, exit. Then uh, we're just going to get everyone to run back here. Now, the trick here is we want to pass out in front of them and then wake up. Normally what happens is you get beaten up. You pass out from the damage and then you force yourself to get back up and get instead of playing dead. We're going to trick the system on that. We're going to try doing two at once because I haven't tried doing that before. Uh, you can maybe wander off a little bit further. You need to have your support staff need to be quite far away. Otherwise, what happens is people won't play dead. People will not play dead if there is one of their group or one of their squad around that's actually in range and that they could help out because they'll feel, you know, bad lying there unconscious while everyone else is, you know, fighting. 
So, in fact, we'll put them in their own squad. Yeah, that feels much better. And then we're going to put them up near these guys, and then we're going to have them pass out. And... And to do that... We are... Are we definitely hostile with them? Why are we not hostile with them? Okay. They should hate us. We have robo-limbs. Seriously? Guys, we have robotic limbs. Yep, darkness among us. There you go. By the time they woke up. Excellent. Since they've woken up and they hate us, what we want to do is yoink a limb off each one of our people. Uh, you. Dan, did we grab your limb? Ah, damn it. You. Grab the limb. Chop it off. And due to the way the game works, you just fall unconscious when that happens. And conscious for a second, unconscious for a second, and then both of them should play dead. Playing dead and playing dead. Excellent. Then we just reinstall the limbs. Once the limbs are reinstalled, you can tell them to stand back up again. Now, right now, their toughness is at 19. Uh, so let's see what happens when we tell them to get up. In fact, let's make that sneaky and get up. Does it make a difference? No, no, no. Don't sneak. Actually get up. Oh, okay. That was a bad idea. That seems to have scuppered that plan. One second. We'll do this one more time. All right. So it seems this works better when you do it with just one person. So there we go. Limbs. Drop it off. And boop. <laughs> I love the way they just face plant when you do that. This is one of the reasons we had to go through so many things. It's just that this way. Okay. How are they looking? Are they actually... Nope. D don't get up, buddy. Just... You know what? Stay down. Just stay down. What is that? 51? Yeah. 50... Ooh. You're at 51 toughness. Now let's immediately stick that limb back on. And looking at your toughness, you're at 51, your unconsciousness has worn off, you're now at 55. In fact, you don't even need to get up any further, do you? Eh, well, we actually do want to get closer to them. The more of them we're in range when we do it, the better it is for us. Alright, let's speed run this. I think I got the hang of it. Limb. Gone. And they fall. And immediately put the limb back on. The moment they start falling down. Currently, they're at 31 toughness. They are in playing dead, and then we tell them to move, they go up to 39 toughness. <laughs> then we go back to limbs, we remove it, and poof, they collapse again, and then we immediately put the limb back on. <laughs> and then we wait until the unconsciousness wears off. At which point, they will go into, come on, playing dead. We tell them to get up. We're now at 46 toughness. We immediately remove the limb. They fall unconscious again. No one even hits them. This is sort of broken. And uh, put the limb back on. And repeat. There we go. 80 toughness. Hard as nails. And all we had to do was take off our legs a few times. Pretty handy. All right, let's head back. There is uh, one thing, unfortunately, we cannot train this way. I mean, we can train a lot of things, but there's one thing that's not possible to train without getting into a bit of trouble, and that's melee defense. Uh, melee defense or dodge. Those two, I haven't found a way to train those, well, 100% safely. As in, you actually have to get hit a bunch of times. After playing around for a while, I haven't been able to figure out a, well, excessive way of training up your your uh, dodge or your melee defense. The only method to do it seemed to be to have a base, get some people in it, and get them to attack you a lot. You're going to need to get hit to do this, which means you're going to need good armor. That really slows down the process. Your melee attack, martial arts... Dexterity, toughness, and even strength, all of those are quite trainable, quite handily, with no base required. Dodge and, yeah, dodge and melee defense, there's no way around it. However, just to, to point out the uh, difference, we're going to get Jai longer here, and we're going to put him up against, I think there's some ninjas over here? Yeah, there's like three or four ninjas. Now, these are actually pretty tough opponents early on in the game. Uh, but Jai longer, Jai longer here should be pretty good, considering their martial arts is that high, and martial arts is incredibly damaging. 86 is our martial arts. Do bear in mind, our strength is only 35, so our strength is absolute weak sauce, which means we are incredibly weaker than we should be. And uh, we'll take them off block, and we'll let them go nuts. And that's 123 damage straight away. I can't even see... Who did we hit? Did, did we get him? And... Yeah, we completely caved in their chest cavity and gave them a minus 75. And uh, that's the second one hit. And the second one is also down, missing their head and their right arm. Oh my god! Okay, that's it. Well, yeah, done. That That's a good statement. So, sort of the point is, oh wow, it's a whole bunch of these guys. Well, 
Yeah, it makes it hard to change up dodge unless you turn on the dodge skill because you're sort of just killing everything in one or two hits. Yeah, he just kicked that guy in the face and it knocked him over. Yeah, 163 damage. What's the bets you fall in one hit? Yeah, that's a bet you don't want to take. Holy hell. No, dude, don't screw... 298 damage. What is left? Please, did that... Yep, they're gone. Literally took their heads clean off. Like 100 and... Minus 199 to the head. I don't think I have ever seen that. Bear in mind. This is all stuff you can train up quite easily without... Well, okay, true, you have to do, go get Catalan. So I suppose we'll do one last thing. Uh, I was going to try and do something, you know, maybe a little bit big for the end, do a whole bunch of things. I got distracted by training a bull how to steal. It's it's a long story. I made a little video on it. But anyway, what we're going to do instead is show you where to get your hands on some armor if you don't want to wait to grind up all that armor. And we're going to go over here to this river. Yeah, we're going to have to pass through the Holy Nation. So I'm not even going to bother going with stealth because if we use stealth, that will slow us down. We can run at 42 miles per hour carrying the bull, only 29 if we're sneaking. So, yeah, who cares about the Holy Nation? Let's just run straight through that place. When you get to the mouth of the river, be prepared for a long swim. It's usually best to send a robot to do this, but uh, I don't think our robots are fast enough to outrun the Holy Nation. I probably should have carried a robot here to do it. As you go further and further up through here, and it is a long trek, you'll eventually find Armor King's workshop. Yeah, this is awkward to get to. There is no way in or out of this valley except by swimming the whole way, either from up top or down bottom. That's it. Armor King, Armor King, saving lives with armoring. So this is the guy you can talk to about buying, well, Masterwork Armor. It's the only place that actually stocks you the good stuff. The good stuff of the good stuff. Ooh, Masterwork Great Assassin's Rags. Nope, stop getting distracted. Anyway, Armor King likes to follow anyone who shows up at his shop. So maybe throw in the bull first, and then when he's busy following the bull, uh, sneak in yourself behind if you want to rob the place. Otherwise, just buy the armor. The reason you're going to want to come here is twofold. For one, you can buy really good masterwork armor. Okay, we might have to stay for a day until his inventory refreshes. He didn't have the samurai leg plates and helmet we were hoping for, but we managed to nick some masterwork grade samurai armor. That will mean that in de melee defense training, you'll take far less damage. Doesn't matter if you're, you absorb most of the damage, you're still going to gain the exact same amount of experience. Very, very helpful. The second thing is, if you really want to get a melee experience, you need someone who's got very high melee attack. And Armor King's Thralls, well, they're unique. They have 104 attack, but you can keep, it actually keeps getting better as they keep attacking. I think it maxes out, can theoretically up to 150, according to a, a YouTube comment I saw, but like it, you'll probably get up to 120, 130. So your plan would be to knock one of these out. And eh, what's the... You, yeah, we'll, we'll give that a go. Actually, no, we might be seen by that one. We might be better off trying to knock out the one in the corner if they haven't already seen us. And then you'd, well, grab them, bring them home, stick them in a corner somewhere, and use them as your training dummy when you need to uh, do some defense training. Oh my god, they totally can see us. Oh, no. How about if we go in there? Can you still see us now? Come on. You should be too busy looking at the bull. Perfect. Now, oh, one thing I was advised. When you're doing assassinations, the best thing to do... Put it on normal speed, click the button, and then as they wind up, keep clicking it some more. Oh, yeah, I think I've annoyed them. Uh, no, nope, I didn't want to do that. Let's uh, let's just pick them up and get out of here. Where's the bull? Oh my god. Yeah, don't mess with Armor King. That guy's a monster. So the plan would be, nick one of their thralls, bring it off to your base, use the, take it out when you want to use it uh, for melee defense training. Give it a terrible weapon and just let it wail on someone. That's pretty much what you do. The only other choice is Igor, it seems. Igor, it belongs to the United Cities, so you'd need to be enemies with the United Cities to make that work. All right, so maybe after playing around too much, I did find a way to train Dodge that's semi-safe. It's, uh, remember that guy we annoyed earlier, Armid, and he, uh, attacked Sad Neil? Yeah, well, the guy who was attacking Sad Neil, we managed to get him along and convince him to attack instead the person we were trying to cha train up. Of course, first we knocked them unconscious, we equipped them with some terrible crab armor to reduce their dexterity, gave them a wacky slashy sword, okay, wacky sla slashy, whatever it's called. We gave them the really fast little ninja blade thingy, and then we made sure that uh, Jay Lunger here was equipped in some very good cut-resistant armor. Now, we could have went with blunt damage, but honestly, that takes longer to heal, and this way they attack a lot faster. Also, they have better attack indoors. Let's see if we can click on them there. 
They are up to... Oh, 54 attack. They were in the 40s when they started. They're actually getting better at attacking. We're training their attack and we're training our dodge. Uh, our dodge right now is up to 42. This seems to be a reasonably good way to get dodge up to like the 50s mark, I'd say. Maybe even a little bit higher. Best bit is, even when Jalonger passes out, the guy will just keep hanging around hitting him until he wakes back up again. And if you ever want to stop the training, all you do is you get them to hop out of the bed. They'll keep beating them until they're unconscious. And once they're unconscious, they'll walk away. It was a little bit finicky to set up, I won't lie, but with enough time and effort, you, you can probably get it to work. After far, far, far too much effort, we have got this wooden pawn and trained them up relatively safely to get martial arts up to 86, dodge up to 79, uh, strength, dexterity, well, okay, the strength we're still a bit weak on. But I wasn't waiting any longer. I have spent far, far, far too long on this project. I should have had a rim at the episode out already. But we're going to close the door and we're going to give them a bit of a test. Down here you can see their dodge is 95. They're getting a plus 16 because, well, we've equipped them in faith. And by faith I mean not really armor, just stuff that gives them bonuses. For example, this gives a dodge skill effect of a 20% bonus to it. That's great. It also gives a plus 6 to your martial arts. This gives plus 2 to martial arts. This gives plus 4 to martial arts, which is why our martial arts is 106. Our dodge is 95, though our strength is still weak sauce. We, we put on some limbs, but these aren't even masterwork limbs. These are just specialist limbs. Really should have equipped them with masterwork for what we're about to try next, but that felt like a little bit of overkill. What we got next is, uh, well, we have Bugmaster in here. We sent over our little assassin guy, our assassin guy brought them back, and we're going to pick a fight with them. Yep, come on. no, harp. Don't, don't do that, harp. Stay outside, stay outside. You, you were about to try and open the door. My bad. Okay, oh, yeah. set them free. Let's start a big fight. Okay, oh, yeah. come on. Wait, you're not going to... Okay. Okay, could you please get out here? I want to be able to see this. I figure the stats are actually... God damn it! Why are you hiding in the corner there? Come on. Ow! Yep, yeah, right to the head, right to the chest. Oh! A successful dodge, and I'm pretty sure we're about to get our butt handed to us. Whoa! What the hell? 111 damage, straight to the head, knocked out. Oh my god! <laughs> Seems like all your training of lying in bed and getting hit, or hitting people that were lying in bed, has finally paid off. You are now, uh... Wow. Um... Well, wait, wait, actually, before you do that, maybe, maybe pick up Bugmaster and put them back in their cell. That was kind of mental. Right then. So, I am going to successfully call that, you know, done. We, we've managed to learn how to train someone to be tough enough to beat Bugmaster in a one-on-one -on -one fight. I think there was a little bit of luck there. Not gonna lie, there was definitely a wee bit of luck, but there was, wait, no, don't set him free again. Tr heal him up. Okay, okay. Perfect. Now, sorry about the delay getting stuff out. I probably could have done this a little bit faster if I didn't spend half a day teaching a bull how to rob a bank, but things happen. So, uh, this is the end of the power leveling guide to Kenshi. It seems it's a completely broken game, and unless you put some restrictions on yourself, it's not going to be nearly as much fun as it should be, but uh, half the fun was figuring out how to break it. Anyway, next up will be RimWorld. I uh, hope you enjoyed, and good luck.